I'm Oblivion. I'm one half of the Grim Tutors. I make educational Magic the Gathering content, as well as stream a variety of games over here on Twitch. I am your slightly spooky, mostly helpful guide here at Minko University, where misclicks, misplays, and mana are the game and learning is the aim. MikoU is all about making Magic Online less intimidating and a lot more fun. Whether you're new to the client, returning after a break, or just trying to stop misclicking through your triggers, this series is here to help. Each episode, we break down parts of the MitGo experience, from using the interface to understanding gameplay tools, drafting, and even navigating new set releases. I'll be walking you through the stuff that nobody tells you, but everyone wishes they knew when they started. So don't worry, class is chill, questions are welcome, and there are no pop quizzes. So let's hit the stack and get started. Hey everyone, today we're walking through all of the different settings that you need to know to customize your experience, smooth out your gameplay, and reduce your need to frantically Google how to pass priority. On the home screen, you're going to find things like the latest announcements, your active leagues, and the upcoming tournaments. I'd like to start with the settings. So for here, in the top right hand corner, you'll find the gear icon for the settings. Right away, you'll see the options for display and sound, including things that you can adjust like the master volume, the in-game volume, or even the startup music that plays at the very beginning. You can keep that on or off, it's all about your preferences. Under card display, you can choose whether or not you would like creatures with summoning sickness to have their own animation. You can also select if you would like to have your foil treatments animated. Now I like to keep this on because I like to keep things nice and flashy, especially if you have those super special dragon's eye lands from Tarkir Dragonstorm. You don't want to miss out on all of that really cool foiling and they blink. If you hover over a card, it will bring up a larger version of the card. This is called hover zoom. If you're not a fan of this, you can disable it using this box right here. You can also display the card preview window so when you hover over a card, it brings up its own window. You can adjust the size of this window with the little white box in the corner and make it as big or as small as you would like it to be. Under account settings, you can change your email and password, enable your two-factor authentication settings, and you can also update your shipping address, which is very important if you're participating in any events that award physical prizes. You can even write a little bio if you'd like. Mine just says, hi, I'm Oblivion. Under avatar, you can change your avatar. It will show you all of the avatars that you have available in your collection, as well as avatars that you still need to acquire somehow, some way. Of course, my avatar is set to my own custom avatar, so I will leave it saved as such. Under input settings, this is where Mitko really starts to feel like your own. By default, things like passing priority or responding to triggers are going to be utilizing the numbers at the top of your keyboard. If you're like, me and you prefer to use your number pad on the right hand side, you can bind and unbind to those numbers. In order to do that, you would just click unbind, then bind, press the key that you would like, and then click save. You can also change how your mouse behaves, including your left click, your right click, and even your mouse wheel. Under in dual settings, this is going to tell the game when to stop in order for you to pause and have an opportunity to take game actions. So let's say that you want to tap down a mana dork in your opponent's upkeep. We would set a stop on upkeep on our opponent's turn during one-on-one -on -one games. Each stop has a helpful tooltip if you hover over it, letting you know what it is for. You can set different stops on your turn and your opponent's turn. Miko gives you the flexibility here depending on your strategy or deck. For commander fans, yes, Miko supports multiplayer commander. You can set stops for each of your opponents individually and the turn order is very clearly labeled. So you can fine tune exactly where you want the opportunity to respond based on which player's turn. Under other dual settings, if you'd like to speed up your games, there's a couple different options, like turning on Miracle Bluffing. This will let you pause as though you were going to cast a card using the Miracle ability. You can also enable No Possible Play Yield All at the start of each game, which will pass through your entire turn as though you had no actions to take. 
under buddies, clans, and chat, you can control who can message or trade with you, join or leave clans, manage your buddy list, set notifications for buddy logins or product additions. You can also choose to mute messages from people who aren't on your list, which is great for avoiding spam. Under game history, Mikko automatically logs your match history. You can replay past games to review your plays or see any of the event number details for reporting bugs. By clicking details, you can get the event and game number in order to report any bugs if needed. If something goes wrong mid-match, this is what the support team will use in order to help you get that bug fix. And that's your Mitko settings walkthrough. A few tweaks in here can make your experience way smoother and help you feel way more in control. Got a favorite setting that I didn't mention? Be sure to drop it in the comments. And if you're just getting started, head over to part two of this series where I'll walk you through managing your collection, building decks, and importing from tools like Moxfield. Thanks for watching. Be sure to like and subscribe.